Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. Today, um, this video is going to be kind of responding to something that I saw on Instagram. It kind of made me upset. As you guys know, I attended the 2022 March for Life in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Awesome, awesome experience. Unfortunately, I was not able to go to the 2023 March for Life, which happened just a couple of days ago. But as I was kind of reminiscing on the March for Life when I went last year and just how amazing it was, and I was seeing pictures from the March for Life and how many people were there, the first March for Life that ever happened after Roe versus Wade was overturned. I can't believe like the one I went to Last year was the last March for Life where Roe vs. Wade was implemented. And this was the first one after 50 years on the 50th annual March for Life, Roe vs. Wade were finally celebrating the overturning of Roe vs. Wade while looking to the future and working for a pro-life, post-abortion America. I came across, a friend of mine had posted the irony in being Catholic proclaiming to be Catholic, like Joe Biden, and being pro-abortion. So I came across it and I decided to click the post. And also I decided to comment on it. And I commented, there's absolutely no way you can be Catholic and pro-abortion. So I'm going to show you guys the screenshots. And then I'm also going to read it and talk about a little what they posted. So let's get started. So the first picture that they have is, it says, it's not a march for life, it's a march against our rights. Fellow Catholics are saying it's a right to have an abortion, which by the way, goes completely against what the Catholic Church teaches. The Catholic Church is not pro-abortion, pro-choice at all. Um, you have amazing saints like St. Jerome, St. Basil, St. John Chrysostom, who are actively speaking out against abortion and calling it murder. But that was the first uh, post. The second point, post says, what is the, and then they have it in air quotes, March for Life. And they said, around the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the so-called March for Life, <laughs> gathered thousands of anti-choice extremists in Washington, D.C. to pray and protest against abortion, and then they put rights. But we all know it's not an abortion right. So we're, anti, we're thousands of anti-choice extremists. The problem with that is you haven't explained what the choice that the pro-abortion crowd is advocating for. The pro-abortion crowd, the choice that they want to have is to be able to murder their unborn child 
in the womb. That's the choice. So when you say we're anti-choice, yes, I am very anti-choice of giving women the so-called option because they believe they have the so-called right to abort, to murder an unborn child. I am extremely against that choice. But I'll tell you what the choices I'm not against. I'm not against motherhood. I'm not against adoption. And I'm not against abstinence. So I have, I'm giving the actual choices that do not include murdering an unborn child in the womb. To me, when you explain what the choice is they're offering, they're going to say it's either the choice to have an abortion or don't have an abortion. So commit murder in the womb or don't commit murder in the womb. Why are you even putting committing murder in the womb as an option, as a choice? That to me is just boggles my mind. And then they said, the, sec the third point actually, it represents the far right anti-choice minority. I don't know if you guys have seen like when I went to the March for Life last year, the majority of people, at least in my generation and the generation coming up, is pro-life because we know more and we know better and we are actually following what the church teaches, the Catholic church teaches we're all pro-life. So we're not becoming a quote unquote minority anymore. We are actually becoming the majority opinion. And it says previous March for Life speakers, and they, every time they say March for Life, it's all in air quotes. It's all in quotes, but I'm doing air quotes. Speakers include right-wing commentator Ben Shapiro, who is very pro-life, and I'm gonna give credit to where credit is due, very, very smart in the pro-life movement, who regularly spouts misogynistic and transphobic ideas so they're pro-choice and they're for the LGBTQ community. And these are people professing to be Catholics. So, two strikes. Um, in 2020, then President Donald Trump was the first sitting president to speak at the march, even though he regularly violated Catholic teachings about life on every issue from immigration to the environment to capital punishment. First of all, Trump wasn't Catholic. Trump isn't Catholic. Joe Biden, is a professing Catholic. Joe Biden is a professing pro-abortion Catholic. Since they're putting the March for Life in quotes, I'm gonna put Joe Biden is a Catholic in air quotes. So of course he's not gonna go strictly on Catholic teaching. He's not Catholic. But these people who run the Catholic for Choice account are professing Catholics. Reminds me so much of Joe Biden. Anyways. Next, they said it represents uh, the far right anti choice minority. And then they mention the former priest, Frank Pavone. Uh, he says the Vatican removed Pavone from priesthood for blasphemy and disobedience for bipartisan political stunts like placing an aborted fetus on the altar. You guys can go do research on that on your own. Um, and then they say losing Roe is not a victory. Yes, it is. Last year Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, which the March for Life claims as a victory, it is, <laughs> massively backfired. No, it didn't. The 2022 midterm elections proved that protecting abortion access is popular. Abortion rights won in blue and red states. Obviously, they're going to win in blue states. We're going to give that to you. But actually, in the cases, here, let me tell you the states that banned abortion. We will read it to you. And then you can tell me if the red states uh, wanted abortion access or not. Let's give it to you. Idaho, South Dakota, North Dakota, West Virginia, Georgia, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, Kentucky, Wisconsin, just to name a few. The last video that they close off with is the March for Life doesn't speak for me, meaning them as a Catholic. Well, they don't speak as Catholics. They don't speak on behalf of the Catholic Church because they go against church teaching. They say, don't let abortion opponents fool you. We support abortion access because of our faith, not in spite of it. Oof. No. And add your name to the petition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, to let the world know the so-called March for Life doesn't speak for us. So they think, well, one, we don't want to speak for you guys because you're pro-abortion. And second, 
um, you think you're speaking for Catholics when you actually go against, completely against what the church teaches. So how are you going to still consider yourself Catholic? Like what makes you Catholic? If you can't get the basics of what the church teaches, your church, my church teaches when it comes to the pro-life and pro-choice stance. It's basics. It's Christianity 101. Even people outside of the Catholic Church who claim to be Christian are pro-life. The majority of people who are not non-Catholic Christians are pro-life. Because that's simply just what Christianity teaches. Christianity is a pro-life religion. So you guys, we should be saying you don't speak as a Catholic because you're not Catholic. You don't speak on behalf of the church. You don't speak on behalf of what the church teaches. You don't speak on behalf of the Catholics. I don't know. It just bothers me a lot. So anyways, <laughs> I think we're going to end there. That's what the post was about. And the more I was scrolling through their Instagram, the more I got really upset and really annoyed. Because I'm like, everything people are saying is going against the church that they claim to believe in. So, and especially on an issue like this that is of the life of an unborn child and of the life of the mother and they're not seeing value in the life it amazes me and just for the catholics that are listening to this or the christians who like to read about what the saints have to say and early church fathers have to say i'm going to read a quote from saint john chrysostom why so where the ground makes it care to destroy the fruit where there are many efforts at abortion where there is murder before birth for you do not even let the harlot remain your harlot but you make her a murderer also you see how drunkenness needs to whoredom whoredom to adultery adultery to murder or something or rather something even worse than murder for i have no real name to give it since it does not destroy the thing born but prevents it being born why then do you abuse the gift of god and fight with his laws and after and fall after what is a curse as if it's a blessing and make the place of procreation a chamber for murder and arm the woman that was giving given for childbearing unto slaughter let's read that last part why then do you abuse the gift of god and fight with his laws and follow after what is a curse as if it is a blessing and make the place for procreation, aka the womb, a chamber for murder and arm the woman who was given for childbearing unto slaughter. So he's saying the place of procreation, which is the womb, you're making it a chamber of death, of murder. The safest place for a child should be the womb. And the woman's body, the woman that was given for childbearing, that's what the womb's main function is scientifically speaking as well unto slaughter so i just wanted to give you guys that little quote to think about thank you guys so much for watching and remember to like and subscribe comment down below and always always remember this that jesus is lord and as saint john chrysostom said and many other awesome saints after him abortion is murder we'll see you in the next video peace out Thank mm -hmm. you.